And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, the head of Vajra Enterprises. A man, a man of, a man of many games, and now running his first Kickstarter, if I, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. The one and mm -hmm. only Brian St. Clair King. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I've, it's been, it's been a, a really fun time with this Kickstarter. I, I kind of, uh, it's stressful, but it, parts of it make me wish I'd done Kickstarters a, a long time ago. It makes mm -hmm. me wonder why I waited so long. Mm-hmm. So, I know it, I know it's been quite a while since I since I had you on, and the uh, time that I did, it was more of a general purpose thing regarding um the out regarding the output of Vajra, and this time it's a bit more um specific with it with end times, which you which um now I would make a I would make a twenty I would make a um current year joke ab about do about doing an <laughs> RPG. Trying to put out an RPG when, when everybody when everybody's in and out of an apocalypse, but yeah, nah, too nah, too easy. I'm pretty sure if I'm cynical enough, I can make that joke about any year. So there's no sport in that. <laughs> but when it well, I, I it is a it is a weird uh, there's a weird bit of uh, coincidence that has been sort of uh, following me around a little bit when I when I did my first game. Um, Fate Source and Death, which takes place exclusively in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was uh, wrapping up that game, getting ready to publish it, uh, the 9 11 attacks happened. Um, and then a later game I did, Hoodoo Blues, uh, which takes place in the South, in the, you know, America's Old South, uh, and has a large section about New Orleans. As I was getting that book ready to be published, Hurricane Katrina happened in New Orleans. Uh, and then I started writing this book about apocalypses, and 2020 happened. Mm. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'm thinking maybe maybe someone should do a Kickstarter to to like raise money to prevent me from creating any more games. <laughs> uh, if that's the kind of luck that 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 follows me around. Um. Uh, you know, there's there's a small part of me that want that wants to say maybe 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 if you make a fantasy game, that's there's no way you can jinx that. <laughs> oh, we'll see. The, the worst that the worst that could happen with that is the um a, is the Amazon Lord of the Rings gets canceled, which in that case, you'll probably be doing the universe a service with that. <laughs> um. Now, when it come now. When it comes to the end times, and obviously there's um, there's been no shortage of apocalyptic games or post-apocalyptic games throughout yeah. um, throughout the throughout the just the last decade, even bef even before all the screwiness that happened with this year. And what I'm curious about is what if somebody's diving into end times, what are they going to find familiar with your take on apocalypse slash post-apocalypse, and what are they going to find mm -hmm. different? Yeah, yeah. Well, the I mean, first thing I'd say is uh, I try to make a distinction between uh, post-apocalyptic and and apocalyptic. So, mm -hmm. you know, in 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 post-apocalyptic, you've got some bad thing that's happened—a nuclear war, or you know, the civilization running out of fuel, or something bad, massive climate change. Something bad has happened, mm -hmm. uh, and then people are sort of now they're in the aftermath and they're kind of trying to survive in a, you know, after the fall of civilization, but also have that opportunity to rebuild civilization. Mm -hmm. So post-apocalypse post stories to me are like a, what comes next kind of story. Uh, end times, the apocalypses uh, plural, and I'll get in that in a moment, but the apocalypses are ongoing as, as characters are interacting with them. So there's, it's not, it's not that they're over the, the characters when they're, they're in one of these apocalyptic environments, it's always in a situation that is getting steadily worse. You know, mm -hmm. the, 
deaths, you know, people are dying, the human population is is going down, things are just getting more and more dangerous day by day. Um, so it is, it is, to my mind, truly an apocalyptic rather than... Um, the other thing is that it's, it's the apocalyptic environment is, is not the whole setting. It's one place that players can go to. So players uh, are time travelers in the game. Uh, they have the ability to shift their consciousness into the few, 10 years into the future or 10 years into the past. So they, they inhabit their body 10 years into their future or their body 10 years in their past and their consciousness switches with them. So if you go back to your past, your past you comes to the present or if you go to the future comes into your current body. Mm -hmm. um, so when players go to the, the apocalyptic future, uh, they're they're traveling there into the body of of their post their their apocalyptic self, uh, their future self, and uh, the 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 goal is to prevent the apocalypse. Uh, but what happens? What players find is they have, they prevent an apocalypse, and then a different apocalypse happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some some reasons there's some reasons that that players may find out uh, in in the course of a campaign uh, why this is, but uh basically that 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 gives you multiple apocalypses you might end up going to uh and and I try to make each one unique mm -hmm. uh so there's five apocalypses detailed in the game and um you know I try to avoid things that have been explored a lot in games so far so there's there's not a there's not a nuclear apocalypse uh just because I feel that's been done. changing time they're getting Getting to explore all the the different ones, yeah. uh, and and what those are like. Now, give, and uh, now in the um, Kickstarter page, you mentioned inspirations be ranging from Terminator, Twelve Monkeys, Umbrella Academy. But mm -hmm. the way you describe it, as far as well as the whole new apocalypses that might show up, I have yeah. to wonder if one of your inspirations was the end of eternity. I'm not I'm not familiar with that. That's The End of Eternity is a uh, was a book by Isaac Asimov um and dealt dealt with a company called Eternity capital E that would ta that had a, that had a time traveler that basically had a time travel building where the, to the point where different centuries are represented by different floors of the building. Um and cool. they they would they would try and um they would try and modify time to incur to um get the result of total human happiness. Okay. And but the thing but of course the thing is you met you you mess with you mess with time and eventually time strikes back because well if nature abhors a back a vacuum it ha it is even less kind when it comes to paradoxes. Mm-hmm. But even with that, with the whole notion of of sent of sending um, consciousness to the to the past or and the future, how is how is that particular thing managed without having to? Is it a case where people are going to have to manage multiple character sheets at once, or do you have a means of minimizing the amount of pages that somebody's going to have to bring to the table? And half of it is is you from the future, mm -hmm. and as you play, time passes. So each you know each fifty experience points you gain, a your, a year passes in game time, and and you grow an old a year older. But the you that you can travel back to when you go back ten years in time grow grows in a year older, and the future year grows in a year older. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're you're adjusting each of those character classes as you as you advance, uh, so that they're all up to date. Um, there's also, you know, the also you can you can one of the aspects of the game is you can change 
you can go back in time and you can change yourself. Um, you know, one of the examples is you could go back in time and leave a note for your 10 year old self saying you need to start taking first aid classes. Uh, and when you do that, and when you come back to the present, you'll find that suddenly you know how to do first aid. Uh, and then, of course, your your future self might know how to do first aid even better than you and might carry, you know, an EMT uh, first aid kit around everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, you know, my advice is for the character sheets is write everything in pencil because you're going to be constantly changing stuff uh, as you as you mess with time and as you mess with yourself even. Yeah. Now you mentioned that there's going to be that the book would have five apocalypses. Now that that would be detailed in there. Now obviously I can't obviously I can't ask you to go into full detail on all of them. Um one because that'd be spoilers and two that it that we'd be here all night. <laughs> but could you give me the skinny on what on what some of those apocalypses might entail? Sure, sure. Um so there's there's one that's uh, basically a, a climate change, a series of natural disasters, uh, the escape of some genetically engineered plants, mm -hmm. uh, all result in nature sort of retaking the world, basically, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, sort of malevolent greenery everywhere. You know, play killer plants, um, nature. Every everywhere buildings just being you know torn down or uh you know knocked down by earthquakes and then and then torn down by plants um so that's that's one of them uh another one is um some attempts to uh, attempts to fight global warming warming by by putting some stuff into the atmosphere uh cause actually cause a, a, a something that sort of blocks out the sun and causes a, a, a massive uh uh, you know, a permanent darkening of the sky and a, and a permanent uh, um, equivalent of a nuclear winter, but but without necessarily not necessarily caused by nuclear bombs, but uh, basically a, a worldwide freeze. Uh, that's another one. There's another one where um, uh, almost almost the opposite, where uh, there's some stuff that happens and. Um, the outside world becomes inhospitable. It's, it's basically there's, there's radiation and high energy particles. Um, and, um, it's dangerous to be outside for any particular, any, any good length of time. And people start shutting themselves away, uh, inside, um, and, and trying to, trying to avoid going outside whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so, okay. So that's three of them. Uh, there's one where, uh, the code that and i have names for each of them this the one's called trash flood uh and basically there's there's some stuff that goes on that that, that disrupts the ability to of nations particularly a, a nation like the united states that that creates a lot of trash to deal effectively with their trash and then you get streets uh filled with trash you get rats everywhere you start getting plagues uh and stuff like that so that mm -hmm. that's that's one of the apocalypses and then the final one is one where um, a an artificial intelligence uh, basically takes over takes over the internet, let's say, and and uh, starts creating it starts creating fake everything, you know, fake mm -hmm. emails, fake videos, fake TV shows, fake news articles, everything. Uh, just with the purpose of messing with humanity and, and making everyone believe something different and making everyone be paranoid and angry and, and fighting each other all the time because everyone is, is paranoid and believes that everyone else is, is an enemy. Um, and those are, those are the, those are the five, uh, basically the five upcoming apocalypses that, mm -hmm. that players will go into and also have to fight to prevent. Now, when it comes to when it, com when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the apocalypse, obviously the uh, two 
um, one of the other pillars that that I can that I can see is the notion of allies and um, hunt and hunters. Now, mm -hmm. I'm get now um, allies. I can I can fairly guess these would pro these would probably be um po be helpful NPCs and and similar things. When it comes to hunters, do you have like a list of suggested hunters for different apocalypses? Yeah, yeah. So each. The, now the the I'll, and I'll explain uh, for for anyone who hasn't seen I, I created a, a video but uh, for anyone who hasn't uh, seen any of the stuff on the Kickstarter page I'll explain what hunters are. Um, each apocalypse, you know, as the apocalypses grow stronger, and and I'll talk as if the apocalypses are until. Uh, get stronger and they can do things that um as they get stronger they can do things that aren't really within natural laws you know they they we call them you know dark miracles or apocalyptic miracles you know things mm -hmm. that things that happen uh basically because the apocalypse wants them to uh and one of the things they can do is they can create these really powerful entities that are hunters uh, and the 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 goal of the 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 purpose of the hunter to kill you know a survivor who's really heavily armed or is in a in a bunker or you know has a a whole army protecting them uh, that's who a, a hunter would be created to, to hunt down mm -hmm. um, and each hunter has a each hunter has a um, each apocalypse has its own form of hunter. So, if you go into Nature Resurgent, uh, the the one hunter, the one apocalypse where nature basically starts destroying everything that humankind has built, uh, the hunters are going to look one way and have one form. But if you go into Shelter in Place, which is the apocalypse where it's dangerous to go outside, the hunters are going to look uh, completely different and take a different form and have different abilities. Mm -hmm. um, so, so each yeah, each one has a different hunter, and the hunters have the ability. the The other thing Apocalypse can do is send the hunters back in time to our time, to the present, to try to kill uh, people who are messing with their plans, basically. Uh, so, I mean, if you think of Terminator, if you think of the original Terminator movie, uh, the Terminator is basically a hunter created by a future robot Apocalypse and sent back in time. Uh, to deal with em enemies of that future robot apocalypse, and given given that I'm guess I'm guessing that using the Terminator example, if you use um if you use the T1000 from T from not the uh, T100, not the T1000 from from Terminator 2, that would count as an you would have a case of an ally and a hunter from the same source, for a sec essentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I think I'd say it'd be rare. It'd be rare that uh, anything created by the apocalypse would, uh, you know, be would be made to be an ally or to to help uh, the player characters uh, as they did with you know in Terminator Two, uh, with the with the Terminator that that was basically turned into a, a good guy in that movie. That that's something that. Um, uh, in end times, uh, there's there's not many ways. No, but there is the glory of house ruling to happen. But <laughs> I, I will note that there, yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll also note that uh, one of the skills that players can buy uh, is is a skill called, you know, summon apocalyptic horrors, uh, which is basically any any apocalypse that they've been to, they can summon into the present uh, a. a a monstrous thing from that apocalypse into the present. Uh, they can't necessarily control it, but that thing will, you know, probably just try to eat whoever it sees first. So, uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous gamble, but if you're, for instance, you know, totally outgunned um, in a fight, you might say, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to summon some monster from some apocalypse that I've been to uh, and hope that it just starts eating the my my enemies and i can run off in the confusion mm -hmm. and 
something else is the is within the within that particular section. It ta- it talks about previous apocalypses that may have never come came to pass, but can still be a danger. The way mm-hmm. that's written, the vibe that I get is vestiges of apocalypses that never happened, but at some mm-hmm. point in time they were they were in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, how how do how would those inter- how would those interact with play? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, in addition to the five apocalypses, the five coming apocalypses, I've also got nine previous apocalypses that were prevented by time travelers of those eras. So, so basically, there's the starting with the 1910s. There was one just about every decade through the 1990s. Uh, so about every 10 years, an apocalypse came up and tried to happen and time travelers of that era prevented it from happening. And it became a, a, a thing that was not, it basically got pulled out of our timeline. So it's not something that happened in our timeline. Um, but that apocalypse is still in a way out there. It's still, even though it was prevented uh, and, and sort of severed from this timeline, it's still there and it still has some abilities. And the main ability that, a, that a, a past apocalypse has is to pull time travelers into it. So if uh, basically through what's called what the game calls traps, a where an unwary time traveler can get pulled into one of these failed apocalypses and, and stuck there for a time. Mm. Uh, and and possibly killed if the dangers of the apocalypse, uh, you know, if they can't survive the dangers of that apocalypse while they're in there. Um, and the thing that I the the reason I wanted to add these these past apocalypses uh, is to they're all based on they're all based on history. They're all based mm-hmm. on on things that were happening at the time. Uh, for instance, the 1950s apocalypse. Uh, is a nuclear war uh, and and of course other stuff that happens and and stuff to do with the you know co- cultural conformity uh, that was prominent in the 1950s uh, becoming a sort of a, a dangerous malevolent uh, thing in and of itself there's 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 other things but it's it's based on what was happening at the time and so uh, you know I am I am very much a, a history buff and so I was able to pull in a lot of history of uh, especially history of the united states through the the 20th century uh into these various apocalypses and um and then and then make it so that players can get pulled into these and have to have to survive for a time in these different apocalypses that are based on on different things that were happening throughout american history all right that makes sense um when the come and le- next, the um, whole the whole notion of another apocalypse is that is that a case of um, the just to, just to show that if you just preventing the apocalypse doesn't mean that the story has to end there. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I wanted it. Yeah, I wanted it to be that you could have an an ongoing campaign that uh, wouldn't end. You know, it wouldn't end when you do something that prevents the apocalypse. So, you know, if, if, uh, you know, thinking again of Terminator, you know, the, the, if they hadn't made a Terminator two movie, you know, Terminator one would have ended with, you know, well, actually, no, no, let me, let me say that again. If, if they hadn't made anything past Terminator two, then the series would have ended with, with, Oh, we've prevented that apocalypse. It's never going to happen. Happy ending. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, di- I didn't want I didn't want that to 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 ruin a you know I didn't want a happy ending to ruin a, a perfectly good campaign. Uh, so I've you know, and I also wanted to give players the ability to explore all the different uh, apocalypse all these different apocalypses. Uh, so that's why I you know made it so that the you know you prevent one apocalypse you're not you're not you don't get the happy ending. Another apocalypse comes up to take its place. Uh, mm-hmm. And it gives players uh, an even larger goal 
uh, and an even larger sort of secret to try to learn is is why why is it, why and how is this happening that we're getting these multiple apocalypses um, that one is just replacing the other and why is why is now different than the the single apocalypses that were trying to happen in the 20th century that were then uh, that were that were just one at a time and that were then present prevented why did they get one each and we're getting you know five. Uh, and what's what's changed there? So I wanted to add a lot of layers of of things that players could find out and uh, research, and um, over the course of a of a potentially a very long campaign. Which I I can definitely make sense of that. Um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to the whole notion of time travel, is it a case where? someone's physically traveling between between these different points in time or or is it a case of them um traveling between consciousnesses of people within the within um that span of time it's it's the latter so you know if you if you go decide to go to the past you're going to appear in the body of yourself exactly 10 years ago uh and you'll have that care you know your 10 years ago character stats uh and equipment and and all that stuff uh, and then your 10 years ago self gets to be in your body in the present uh, and might, you know, depending on how good of a relationship you have with that that 10 years ago character might cause trouble while they're in your body in the present. All right, make, makes sense. And, pl and plus that kind of thing prevents some of the other problems that can happen with time travel stories. Mm -hmm. Because, well, time travel... Time travel as a narrative tool is a, is very much a minefield. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're publishing end times with two with um two rule sets, Orc 2.0, mm -hmm. organic rule components, and um powered by the apocalypse. Now, obviously this isn't my first rodeo with organic rule components. And I'm curious what things are similar and what thing what things would be different compared to previous entries with um orc yeah yeah well i mean orc every, everything before end times and consider orc 1.x so so orc was you know our first game was about oh gosh about 16 years ago mm -hmm. uh was our first game uh and that had the first version of orc and then every every game published since then there's been minor tweaks to the rule system uh to try to try to make it a little a little better, a little smoother, um, and uh, but but no major overhaul to the rule system in, in all that time. Um, and then the last couple of games I published used the Orc Light rule system, uh, which is really you know meant for a, a, a lighter, a more rules light form of play. Mm -hmm. And um, that the experience of writing three games now for the the light rule system really changed my outlook a bit on what was needed in the full orc system uh and told me that you know there's a lot of things i was doing that you did didn't need to do like like the original orc rule system has you've got three stats for your for your health you've got blood body and incapacity and you know there there was a reason for it at the time when it was created uh, and it was attempt to, to be a little more realistic in in how damage is taken and how health is affected by things. But you know, my my experience with Orc Light is no, it, it doesn't need to be that complicated. It could mm -hmm. just be a single stat. Uh, so Orc 2.0, we replaced that with just a single hit point stat. Uh, so a number of things like that, really to to streamline it and and keep the stuff that that enhances gameplay uh and and get rid of the stuff that that just wasn't just ended up not being necessary uh so that's 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 orc point orc 2.0 in a in a nutshell uh it's it still is it still is a, a fairly crunchy system it's still a, a very simulationist system where you know it's it's trying to figure out what what would real what would actually happen if uh if if something you know if you get hit three times with a baseball bat what what would realistically happen to you mm -hmm. uh, um it's it's still trying to answer that question just in a, a more streamlined fashion yeah now 
the other system that you're using is powered by the apocalypse, which mm -hmm. is which of course is another system that that I'm certainly familiar with in one form or another. Um, so a, a couple of things that a couple of things that I'm curious about. One, um, what was the reason for going with um, powered by the apocalypse as a potential approach? And two, where some some versions of uh, games that are PBTA have tweaked things a bit. How? interested in seeing a Vajra setting transported into another rule system, what would you what rule system would you like? And and I got a, a wide range of answers. Um but the number number of people said powered by the apocalypse. Um you know I've been I've been on been, let's say on the lookout for a while for other rule systems that that our settings could work with. Because I, I recognize that different people will have different styles of play that they prefer. Uh, some people like a, a crunchier rule system. Some people like a lighter rule system. Uh, some people like a, more of a simulationist rule system uh, where it's going to answer those kind of, you know, physics questions. Uh, some people like a, a rule system that really helps the story move along. And uh, I, I, I very much want to make Vajra settings available to people who have those different... Uh, uh, have those different uh, uh, styles of play that they enjoy. Uh, so I've been on the lookout for, you know, what's what's a good complement for the sort of crunchy simulationist style of orc? What's something that, that can complement that, 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 that people that aren't into that style of gameplay can enjoy? Uh, and that's why I've been, you know, uh, pulling people, uh, pulling fans of the games, hey, what, what rule systems would you like? And uh, a number of them said "Powered by the Apocalypse." So I thought, okay, this, yeah, I'll, I'll check this out. Uh, and when I did check it out, you know, I liked that it's uh, uh, very much geared for. Uh, it's very much geared for sort of tense situations. You know, it is geared for for danger and tension and conflict uh, and stuff like that. Seems to work really well in that rule system. Um, and I liked I liked how I liked how you know the the Vincent Baker is really who the creator of, of Power by the Apocalypse really encourages each game that uses Power by the Apocalypse to to spin off their own version of it to to change it and make it their own, um, which I think you know you you get some you get some really fantastic games. I mean, you get some games that you know they they just they just take it, redo the words a little bit, rename some things, and it's but it's pretty much the same. Powered by the apocalypse, that's in uh, Apocalypse World, uh, the the first game that, that used Powered by the Apocalypse. But then you've got people who who use that uh, for something like uh, Monster Hearts, for instance, mm -hmm. which is you know very much about uh, about romantic and sexual relationships and has a lot of game mechanics. Uh, uh, about that and and uh, really really takes it off in an interesting direction. So I, I liked the I liked the the encouragement uh, by the creators and also by the community uh, of people to make powered by the apocalypse unique and make it your own for your for the setting that you that you've got and and that's what attracted me to it. Um, as far as what's different in in the end times version of Powered by the Apocalypse, um, I'm still I'm still working on that. That's uh, the the orc version of the game is fully written, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm still developing the Powered by the Apocalypse version of the game. Um, so I can't say exactly, but I do I can say that. Um, you know, the, there's there's going to be some changes for the time travel mechanics because it's very it's very important that um, you know people be able to go back in time and change the world and change themselves 
uh, and and change anything. And that's got to there's there's got to be uh, mechanics that that uh, reflect that. Um, you know, if you if you go back in time and prevent some traumatic event from happening to to you as a kid, um, that's got to have a that's got to have a mechanical effect on your character. Uh, or else it's not gonna it's not gonna feel real to the players uh, if it doesn't have a, a, a of an effect in in the game mechanics like that. So so that's definitely gonna be part of it. Um, and uh, I'm I'm very much you know the the there's a large uh, <clears throat> there's a large amount of mechanics surrounding relationships in Powered by the Apocalypse. Uh, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see that how that plays out when you're looking at the relationships between your past self and your present self and your future self. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the in the game, those that your past self and your future self really are NPCs uh, that you have to manage the relationship. If you if you piss one of them off badly enough, they can they can really start messing with you in in some pretty interesting ways. Uh, so you can't just just take them for granted. Uh, you really have to to maintain that relationship, and so that, I think that's going to be really interesting in to deal with empowered by the the apocalypse. Yeah. Now I, um, I will ad I will admit that part that um I could s the main thing that I that I could see being a little bit tricky with with adapting powered by the apocalypse into this is how playbooks are going to work. Specific, specifically yeah. the the whole um, the whole time thing when it comes to playbooks, because worst case scenario, have somebody having three playbooks to manage it at all at once, <laughs> which I think which, and g given how that would involve three different um, lists of lists of lists of moves and st and stat setups, would I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it would certainly be a challenge. Yeah. Well, there. So each, each, each. Pl there will only be one playbook at a time for each each player. You're not going to have to create a playbook for your past self or your future self. It's all going to be based on your your current playbook. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I you know a lot a lot of Vajra games have had character classes, so I'm I'm very uh, comfortable with and and happy with you know the 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 playbook style which you know ends up being sort of a, a, a type of a, you know character class uh type of uh, uh character generation and uh uh and i'm 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 comfortable with that and and the you know the playbooks uh will be based on sort of archetypes of you know how how you might try to set yourself up to change time. Like if you, if you found that you needed to change the future uh, by influencing the world today, would you, would you try to f make yourself into an assassin and, and kill off anyone who uh, uh, is going to harm the future? Or would you, you know, try to become a, a, a you know, a, re a religious or cult leader and, and, you know, give, gain followers by being able to, uh, uh, make predictions about the future and and try to use those followers to um, to you know as basically an army to to make change happen. There's these sort of different strategies uh, that that will each will have its own playbook. Um, but the and so you really only have one playbook at a time. But uh, I think the interesting thing will be if you go back and you make a pretty severe change to yourself in the past, you could change your playbook in the present. You know, if you go back and, and you uh, say you're on the, the, on that assassin track where you think I'm, I'm going to learn to shoot and I'm going to learn to, you know, uh, you know, kill people silently with, uh, with the uh, Garrett's um, and stuff like that. And that's what you've geared your character for. And then something happens that's so horrible that you go back in time and you, and you convince yourself to like that violence is not the answer. Uh, then that's going to completely change your playbook, and that's going to you're going to have to basically make up a new character on on the fly after you make that change. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes, like I did go, I did go through a bit of the um, 
a bit of the character the character creation that you have in the uh, preview. Mm -hmm. Um, first off, some something that I did note that I that I got a bit of a kick out of is how you did the layout in this very um bulletin board style. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, 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 when I was trying to think what what should what should the page layout look like, I don't want it to be boring. Uh, I, I don't, and and I thought, and I just something came to mind of just that that classic sort of stereotyped um, uh, thing that you see in in movies and TV shows where you've got the conspiracy theorist and they have in their basement the the cork board and they have all the different notes and articles and newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. things and and you know uh, colored string connecting on and stuff like that and and i thought i wonder if i could i wonder if i could do that and have it actually look good as a as a page layout yeah now when it came when it came to when it came to some of the some of the templates i could see i could see some templates being relatively easy to bring over since oh given how many of the uh, previous orc games you've done have a very contemporary approach but mm -hmm. were there any that were a little bit harder to na to um to nail down exactly what they were supposed to be as far as their niche? Um, no, no, I I, I didn't I didn't really have a problem there. I mean, it's it's like you say the the we've done most of our games have been modern, uh, you know. And so, so we've had a complete, you know, set of modern, you know, equipment and modern skills, and and it, wanting to wanting to simplify things for Orc 2.0, I uh, really pared down a lot of it. So it's you know, less skill, simpler equipment, less less unnecessary details mm -hmm. that didn't don't really enhance gameplay at all. Yeah. Um, so simplified, but but I was able to just pull pull in and modify and simplify a lot of the stuff that had already been created for for some of the other modern day games uh, that I've published, um, and and in 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 the orc version of End Times, it is you know there's some guidance about the you know these these are some of the paths you might want to take, but really is freeform character creation, so. Yeah you could choose to make yourself be a, 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 a sniper or you could choose to be, you know, part sniper, part something else because it is, mm -hmm. it is completely free form. It, it's, it's up to the, the player to, to choose the skills and equipment and advantages and stuff like that, yeah. that, that they think will work for uh, the, the approach that they want to take. Um, that said, I do appreciate putting the templates in there because um Something I've always been conscious of is how is not how to eliminate, but how to mitigate the issue of choice paralysis. Now, obviously, some yeah. games aren't going to have a choice paralysis problem at all. You're not going to see um, this kind of problem in, say, Powered by the Apocalypse or Fate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for crunchier games, you're going to. But the more crunch you have, the likelier you are you are going to see it with the extreme end of the of this particular scenario being games like. Um, Champions or GURPS, mm -hmm. yeah. Which, when you when you ended up getting the question of what other systems um, you people would like to see end times, I hope somebody didn't bring up GURPS just to troll you. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I don't think I got GURPS in there. No, there were there were a couple there were a couple of people mentioned fate and I did actually end up uh, the game that I published previous to this game, uh, which I believe came out after after the last time that we talked. Uh, I think that this game came out uh, scoff laws, uh, which is uh, just just to very briefly talk about it. It's a, it's near future uh, characters play uh, gig workers who have these implants that uh, uh, are are supposed to be sort of a law enforcement implant, but they've been hacked. So the implants actually make them uh, smarter, stronger, and faster for each crime that they're currently committing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the gig workers commit crimes to make themselves more capable so they can take on gigs that, that are so difficult that, that normal unenhanced humans can't take them on. Mm -hmm. um, and that game I published using the Orc Light rule set, and I, I did based on some of this feedback that I got. I did the uh, Fate Accelerated as the other rule system, 
Yeah. Uh, and that, that was a lot of fun uh, and seemed to work really well for, for that particular uh, setting and style of play. Which I I could definitely I could definitely uh, see I will I will admit a bit I will admit a bit of bias in the fact that if 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 given enough time I might try and hack end times into the into the um into a card ver a playing card version of the saga system because well I think yeah. the world I think the world needs more um more RPGs that use that use not dice yeah yeah uh, but when it but when it Something else I'll notice the, is I did see that thing you thing you sent with with the um page exa with the um page example, and you have no idea how much of a chuckle I got seeing my <laughs> seeing my own turf represented in RPG because that never happens. <laughs> like the the only time I the last time I remember the Twin Cities getting represented in a um in an RPG an RPG book was Technoir. And that was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm But well, I, you know, before before we started recording, you were mentioning the 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 weather uh, up there, and that made me remember that that you know that I have this thing about uh, you know possible masses of cold air drifting down from the Arctic uh, into the Twin Cities. Uh, so I, I thought I thought you'd like to see that. Um, so yeah, what I did, one of the things I did, uh, some of the some of my previous games, I have a specific place where it's set. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, In Dark Alleys, our horror game. Um, well, they're all kind of horror games, but the the one that's that's very specifically meant to be uh, psychological and cosmological horror. Um, mm -hmm. That one you could play it anywhere, but I provided uh, Los Angeles as the default setting and and have have a good portion of the book uh, talking about both mundane Los Angeles and also supernatural Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, but end times, I decided not to do that and to leave it up to the, the, the GM and the players to decide where the, they wanted gameplay to take place. But I did want to give some helpful suggestions of, you know, what they might run into in different major population centers in North America. So I have a good, uh, Gosh, it ends up being a good 15 pages of the book just listing different major population areas in North America and the advantages and disadvantages that they've, they'd have in different apocalypses. So you can look and you can like kind of shop around for a setting and you can say, oh, well, this one, this one is, is low-lying territory and in the nature, uh, the nature resurgent apocalypse, it's going to be underwater. So maybe that's not the best one to, to do play in. Uh, but this other one, you know, is, is a, you know, is a Denver is, is way up there at a very high altitude. So we're not going to have to worry about that at all. Um, so I just wanted to give that as, as uh, a tool for, for GMs to use when uh, looking at where gameplay is going to take place. Yeah. I will admit that it, what, something that it reminded me of is the, is um, the origin, the origin behind a behind a behind a post-apocalypse story that's probably more popular due to its video game um, adaptation than anything else, and that is Dmitry Glukovsky's Metro 2033. Mm -hmm. he had he had spent at least two at least at least two hours a day every day for years um, going it going in and out and through Moscow's metro network. And with the mm -hmm. amount of tunnels, with the amount of layers, and the amount of um, hermetically sealed areas, he looked at that as the world's largest nuclear bunker. Mm -hmm. And having also played Fallout at the time, those two things kind of came together to, with the with the result being Metro 2033. Um, then of course it oh, ended okay. up. He ended up. He actually he actually um, ended up putting out the book. Through the, through the internet because no publisher wanted to take it until it started blowing up. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. And I can and I the reason why I like the like this approach that you have with these specific cities is well for one it shows that you c the kind of um the kind of ways to personalize the apocalypse which seems to be our theme throughout this book. Yeah, but also the f also the fact that you d that you don't fall into a the tr the trap of a lot of um a lot of urban um 
or a lot of urban yeah. games where for all intents and purposes it's New York <laughs> or it's New York <laughs> with a, it's New York with a different coat of paint. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with se- with doing a, with doing a um, setting as New- as New York, but it's oh it's overplayed. <laughs> Yeah. Or rather, or rather, the or rather the Manhattan area is is overplayed. When a lot of people forget that New York is New York is a big place. Mm-hmm. Like instead instead of just doing Manhattan, why not go with all why not go with all five boroughs? Yeah. Um. And when it comes to something like the Twin Cities, that's one that's one of those things where I'd probably um. If I'm if I'm running something like End Times, I'd probably have I'd probably have it where there's a different attitude with Minneapolis and St. Paul because, well, back in the day, that was one thing that could start a fight. <laughs> but yeah. when but when it comes to the when it comes to the um, worst in entries for for what's sho- for what's shown on that page, is it a, is that just a a means of saying these ones probably wouldn't fit as well, but they're still possible. Or is it a case where they wouldn't work? Well, it's it's the ones. So it's going to be ones where it's going to be more dangerous. You know, it's going to be more dangerous to be in the, that area during that apocalypse. Mm-hmm. If it's one of the worst ones, and if it's one of the best ones, you're going to be better off in in that urban area than in some of the other urban areas. Um, for instance, you know, you've got this, uh, the forever night apocalypse, uh, which is the one where the, the sky basically gets blacked out and there's a, there's a worldwide freeze. Um, you know, T- twin cities is, has got some major advantages where it's got, you know, the, the mall of America could be turned into a, a made giant, you know, like g- greenhouse, you know, grow center growing food crops and, and with people living there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got, uh, you know, you've got nuclear power provide near nuclear power plants nearby, uh, providing power to the twin cities, uh, that, that, you know, aren't going to go dead when, you know, the, the sun's stop shining on the surface of the earth and, uh, and, and, uh, the ground freezes up, the nuclear reactors are still going to work and can still power like, you know, grow rooms and stuff like that. So you've got some advantages there. And that's why I say that that's a, uh, an apocalypse, that uh, that people living in that area will do a little better uh, mm-hmm. than in some of the other urban areas. Yeah. Now, when one of the parts of character creation that um in, that definitely interested me because it's one of the it's one of the things I could see um, being be going mul- going multiple ways depending on the depending on the table in question is the formative experiences step. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, when I now when I look at that kind of thing, the first the first question that I have on that is: Is formative experiences strictly narrative, or is there a mechanical um, consequence to it? And the second the second part is: um, Where do you draw the line between what would be a good example of a, of a formative experience and what would be a bad one? Well, um, so so the formative experience is during character creation, you're asked to choose four things that happened between to your character between 10 years ago and today that basically made your character who they are today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you choose what happened, when it happened, and what it turned you into, what you became because of it. And there, there's definitely a mechanical impact because that's really how we, that's how we, if you, if things in the uh, formative experiences are, are measuring whether they actually change your personality or sort of the core of you um so you know if you if you had you know a a a parent die you know well say okay let's say say both your parents were killed by a mugger in an alley called crime alley Mm -hmm. and that was a (laughs) formative experience that happened to you real Uh, subtle there (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know, far fetched, but but say that was a formative experience that uh, because of it you became heroic. You so you'd say you know at at age eleven my parents were killed in an alley and because of it I became heroic. 
if someone wanted to mess with you, they could go back and, and prevent your your parents from dying. And then you would not, you would no longer be heroic. Uh, you would, your character, your, your character would change because of that. Um, and, uh, you know, and you would be something else in, instead. Uh, and so that's some, that's a way that, that you could, you could mess with yourself. You could really shoot yourself in the foot or someone who wanted to go back, someone who knew enough about you could go back and mess with you and change who you are. Um, and, and, uh, the, that's the, that's the mechanic by which you, you measure that and, and see if, if that's actually going to happen or not. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as, as far as a good formative experience, I I'd say, I'd say they're all good if they make sense in the, in the story of your character. Um, I mean, it could be something really, you know, it could be something like, <clears throat> you know you're a, a a friend gave you a comic book and the comic book you liked something in the comic book so much that you decided to to, to you know that that it, it obsessed you and you decided to uh change you know your the, the course of your life because of it if if that's something that that makes sense in the for the story of the character if it makes sense within that story uh, then I think it's a good formative experience. Um, I, I do I do have one piece of advice for for formative experiences is it's good to have a mix of good and bad formative experiences mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want if if everything that ever happened to you made you a better person, uh, then any change to your past is gonna make you a worse person and mess you up. Uh, whereas if some of the stuff that happened in the past, made you a better person but some of it actually had negative effects on you uh then that gives you the ability to maybe even improve yourself by fixing some of those things that happened to you in the past uh so that's why i say you know make it be a, a mixed thing and also you know also be aware that sometimes a bad thing can have good consequences uh you know your parents dying that's bad but if it makes you a, a, a hero, then, you know, ultimately maybe that's good. Uh, so, so be aware that there is sometimes that, that paradox there of, you know, and, and, and vice versa, you know, having a, uh, you know, being, you know, if you, if you, if your parents won the lottery when you were 10 and, and you became, you know, spoiled rich, that might make you lazy. Uh, which would be a good thing happening and, and causing bad consequences. So just just being aware that just just not being simplistic and being a, an integral part of your character's story, I think, makes it for a good formative experience. Mm -hmm. And given how I, I'm when I can't, I'm guessing that's why you put the sidebar in in the thing on um, keeping formative experiences balanced. Mm hmm. Now, when it com when it comes to um, when it comes to something like the relationship with younger and, o and older self, um, how ex it it mentioned it now it mentions a low a low level would mean that that would mean that they're trying to they're trying to sabotage you. Um, mm -hmm. How would that how would that play out mechanically? Because I I see that night and, and what ends up coming to mind is how much of a scub issue um virtue flaws were with exalted cuz some cuz some people really don't like the notion of of losing control of their player character for for whatever reason Yeah yeah well um I mean like I said you you in end times you do have to maintain that relationship Mm -hmm. uh, because the your past self and your future self is always an NPC. It is always a, a, a character that is is the game master controls. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get to create the the story, uh, and you definitely have an effect on that character. But but the, ultimately, the game master decides what that character is going to do, um, and. Which I, which I think is, I mean, I, I think it's very important that that be the case, uh, because, I mean, not to, not to get, not to get too geeky here, but 
if you've ever if you've watched the the, the Star Trek Voyager series, uh, there was a, a great episode where the crew of the Voyager runs into a, a future version of themselves that's that's been pretty much through hell mm-hmm. uh, and is so desperate that they've kind of forgot you know they've they've kind of forgotten their their ethics uh and are willing to do anything that they can to to prevent that that uh uh you know prevent the what happened from from happening to them uh when they do run into a, like a time travel scenario yeah a year um, of hell yeah and uh and you know that's i i i think it's important that it's, it's it's stories like that that make me feel that it's important that your future self can be an an alien to you. It can be someone who would do things that you wouldn't do, uh, who you know is maybe willing to manipulate you or blackmail you, um, uh, depending on depending on you know the the circumstances between now and then Mm -hmm. uh if you were in charge of that character future version of yourself i think gameplay would be completely different um so it's very important to me that that you know that you not have control of that character and that there be some way of measuring you know how 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 sane is that character how how much do they like you? How how much can you trust them and work with them? And how much do they trust you? Um, so so that's why there's that's why there's those two stats: the relationship with the past self stat and the relationship with the future self stat. Uh, to because there are some some definite mechanics to to affect those stats. You know, as you're as you're changing things in time, uh, you're changing the the those stats and you're changing your relationship with your future self uh and that means that you in your present self actually have to worry about stuff like like self-care you know if you if you decide i'm going to i'm going to save the future and i i'm going to like totally divorce myself from any friends and family and i'm not going to have a social life uh, and I'm not going to, you know, spend a moment's relaxation because I'm going to spend every possible moment uh, trying to prepare myself to save the future. That's going to have a negative effect on your on your relationship with uh, future self stat. And the next time you run into your future self, you might find that they're a little bit crazy uh, and a little bit, you know, willing to screw you over to get what they want. Uh, and, uh, if you, if you let that go th- too badly for too long, you might find that <clears throat> your future self is now pro apocalypse instead of anti apocalypse. Um, uh, so that's, that's where those, that's where those stats come in. Uh, I think they're, they're very, they're very, very important part of, uh, of the gameplay. Um, which is why they're in the sort of the main, they're one of the main stats that, that you track and that you uh, set during character creation. All right, that, defi- that definitely makes sense. Now, for, now, first off, I do want to congratulate you for managing to do so well, getting funded in eight hours and, um, go- and going many times over, actually um, getting close to 10 times over your initial goal of 250. Um, now, as far, as far as the digital version, what would what would you be shooting for for the um, for the release window? Well, uh, so the 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 organic rules components version is already written. Uh, I'm just doing some last minute editing right now, um, but I do have a couple of stretch goals that are going to add more stuff to the book. So we've we've just reached one of our first we've just reached the first stretch goal mm-hmm. uh, the other day, which is to put more art in the book. Uh, so that's going to take a little bit. I got to, I got to, you know, get our wonderful artists working on creating some more art for the book. Uh, wait for that to be done. Um, and then we'll see what other stretch goals we have. We have another stretch goal. That's even more art for the book. That would be, that would be wonderful. That'd be fantastic. Uh, there's another stretch goal uh, to have uh, a, a guest author, uh, Eloy Lasanta, who I've worked oh. with before. Hey, I know, uh, I know Eloy. He's a cool guy. 
Yeah, yeah, he he was he was co-author of uh, Kid World is is a game that we published a, a while ago. Uh, he was co-author of that. Uh, one of the stretch goals is to get him to to write an adventure for the book. Uh, I'm just about to add another stretch goal for another author I'm excited about, uh, who uh, is is going to write an adventure for the book. Uh, so timing kind of depends on which stretch goals we meet. Uh, and how much additional content we're going to add to the book, uh, which is, you know, it's it's one of those great problems to have of, you know, if if we meet the stretch goals, the book might take a little longer to come out, but it's going to be so much better because it's going to have so much extra great content. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, uh, the Kickstarter goes until February 25th. That's when it ends. Um, I'm hoping within two months of the ending, I can at least get the PDF uh, of uh, End Times out to of the Orc version of End Times out to the backers, um, and I'll I'll release. I'm not going to make anyone wait until I have the entire package ready. I'm going to release stuff as it becomes available. Uh, so as soon as that PDF is is available, uh, I'll release it. Um, mm-hmm. I'll probably even release an early version and just say, hey, this is. This is what I have now. We're going to add some great stuff to it later, but we want to get this in your hands so you can start reading and start playing, uh, and then look for look for an even better version coming soon. Um, so, you know, I'm 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 very much hoping it's April at some point people are going to be actually be able to get their hands on the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, electronic hands on the game, uh, anyway, and and be able to start playing the game. All right, no, I will. De- I will definitely be looking forward to to that. And I and with some of the stretch goals, I do. I do hope to um, see how see how it how it comes to how it comes to play. Um, <laughs> and and with with that in with that in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to <laughs> come all the way up to the temple. And like as always, anytime you see fit to return here, the door is always open. Thank you. As I as yeah. I often say here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah, though, thanks, thanks so much. It's it's uh, I really appreciate, uh, especially you know, uh, especially I've I've never I've never been I've never been good at self promotion. Uh, which is why uh, you know I've recently brought on uh, Vajra Enterprises uh, promotion and, and marketing person uh, Mitch Wallace, who's who's great and who who talked me into doing a Kickstarter uh, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and but when when I've got that ability to to hit those stretch goals, um, it just makes me want to get out there and talk to people about the game and and just 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 tell people, oh my God, we're so close, we're going to get to be able to get this great new stuff into the game and add more content uh and it's just it's exciting it's 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 addictive mm-hmm. uh you could say uh trying to trying to trying to reach these goals and, and make the book even better so i really appreciate uh you giving me a platform to to come on here and talk about the game and and hopefully hopefully people will find out about it who who wouldn't have otherwise heard about the game uh and be able to check out the kickstarter mm-hmm. and of course and le- like i said the 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 temple is the temple is open to everybody. Just as ex- well, everybody, everybody, ex- everybody except for those who think that we shouldn't be drinking. <laughs> um, I think there, I think there's even a pol, I think there's even a polka in heaven. There ain't no beer, that, which is why we drink it here. <laughs> nice. And bes- besides, no good story ever started with eating a salad. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!